Hi, I'm Heidi Fisher with Fisher Clark Dairy Farm, and welcome to my calf barn. We built this barn in the fall of 2017, so we are in our second winter. We have 128 pens and eight newborn hutches, which are up front. Three curtains, two of which are temperature controlled. And the other one is manual to allow proper airflow. One of the best features I think of this calf barn is the raised walkway that I'm standing on. It allows you to easily bed the pens from the back so you're not going in between each pen and tracking um, diseases or sickness, whatever. And it also allows you to do like a bird's eye view of the calves. You can walk up and down and look at them and check on their health as you go. Cleaning is done by groups, usually between eight and 16 calves, as our pens up in the heifer barn are in groups of 16. So we do a total tear down. We wash and sanitize the panels and sides, fronts, and we also clean and sanitize the concrete. If it's too cold, we uh, sweep it well and then use lime as a covering to help keep it clean. We recently did a uh, move with our calves where we moved them out of the calf barn and moved them onto their neck. So this area is, has been cleaned and sanitized and it's ready for the next setup. And one of the things that I like best is one of our employees had the idea of taping um, PVC pipes to the beams so that the pins for the pens can be kept in one location and they don't get caught up in the bedding and hauled out or lost in the move process. Our calf barn was designed so that um, a group of pens, about 8 to 16, um, is able to stay open for at least five days so it allows for proper drying and sanitation in between. For ventilation, our barn just utilizes six ceiling fans to stir the air and then proper usage of the curtains. And with the monoslope barn, it allows it to act like a chimney and it pulls the air up and out while the fans circulate the air over the cabs. We've had very little incidence of pneumonia. One of the features that is nice during the winter in this barn is the polycarb sheeting. It really allows the sunlight to enter the barn and it almost reaches to the back fourth row, but it does warm up the barn greatly. During times when it's minus 15, 20 degrees, we can see the temperature 15 to 20 degrees positive in here. We have a designated area of our calf barn that we put all our bull calves that we're going to sell and also the heifer calves that we have um, shuffled out. And those all get put into this one aisle and it's designed with the garage door being right here so that when the guy comes to pick up our calves for sale, he can just back right in. So it doesn't matter if it's raining or snowing outside, his trailer's in here, they're easy to load and he doesn't have to worry about the elements, or, nor do I. One of the things too that we thought of when we designed the barn was making sure that there was ample room for storage of straw. So our aisles are wide enough that we can have straw bales lined up here along the edge. We can still get our uh, golf cart through to go do our feeding um, and we bed on a regular basis and we keep track of that on a chart in the, our washroom. So we know which one is up for rotation to be bedded and we're very heavy bedders. Um, we believe that our animals should have clean, deep bedding, and you can see that today with the sun coming into the calf barn right now, all the calves are standing up and they are enjoying the sun, and you can see that from the ground to where they are is about a two, two and a half foot difference. So we do a stepped feeding program here with our calves. For the first 12 days, they're on a two cord bottle. And then on day 13 through 18, we move them to one of these buckets. They're a little bit wider and more shallow. And then they're on three cords for the five days. And then from there, we move them to their permanent bucket. And by permanent, I mean each pen has its own set of buckets. They're numbered to match the pen so that they always get the same bucket morning and night. So they have two sets, one for morning feeding and one for night feeding. And then at that point they get four quarts. So they go from a two quart bottle to three quarts to four quarts. And we've been seeing um, increased like gut health, less scouring, and they seem to really take off better. 
So while the cap is on a milk bottle, she'll also get a braided green bottle that we hang in the back of her pen so that um, it introduces green earlier to them and helps get that gut healthy, get some good habits started so they are hungry and they look for that green. So when they're done drinking their bottle at the front of the pen, a lot of times they come back here at the end and they'll play around with the bottle and they'll um, eat some of the green that comes out of it. And then on day 46, they get a, just a green band and then they go to a half feeding, which is two quarts, morning and night. And then on day 53, they get the red band added with the green band. And then they get two quarts just at night. And that's through day 60. So once um, on day 61, we remove the green band and they are just on a red band, which means no milk. And then they're on water and grain only.